joining us today. We have Mrs. Helner. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We have Mrs. Helner, Mrs. Beerman, Mr. Fields, and Ms. Breaker here to present to you all about rising senior year. Um, so we do apologize for the cancellation um, last the last, I guess, a couple of weeks ago that we were supposed to have this. Unfortunately, we ran into some technical difficulties that presented um, us from going forward. And so we are here today to kind of talk about everything. Um, please know that we hope that your families, um, you and your families are safe and well throughout this pandemic. Um, like I said, we're gonna go ahead and talk about your senior year of high school. Um, so the first part is, um, there are five stages of senior year and we're going to call it a roller coaster. We're going to liken it to a roller coaster. You know how you go uphill, then there's this crazy turn and gets calm. Then you, just when you thought everything was cool, there's a whoo, storm of a, another drop or two, and then the ride is over. Um, so let's liken senior year to a roller coaster. Um, there's that excitement going uphill and it's slow at first. Um, the forever ride through first semester of senior pictures, homecoming, um, first semester final exams. And then there's that big drop, boom, second semester hits, um, bringing that crazy turn. So more work than um, you are trying to do your senior year. Like who wants to be doing all this work senior year, right? Um, deadlines for scholarships and applications, if you didn't already apply for that early admissions. Um, senioritis now kicks in, and it kicks in something serious. And before you know it, there's a calm spring break, an acceptance letter, a job offer, a commitment to a military branch, all right before the storm. And it's an emotional storm of sadness, excitement, nostalgia, Oh my gosh, four years of high school memories, plus more from the time you spent in elementary and middle school with your closest friends, um, who are more now like family. Prom, awards day, senior cut day. Yes, we know about senior cut day. Um, cap and gowns come in, senior fees are paid, and then the ride begins to slow final exams, and then it's graduation day. Um, and that's the end of your senior year. And it happens just that fast. Um, and so we want you to make sure that you are prepared for this. So let's talk about graduation requirements. You need four credits of English, math, and social studies each. You need three credits of science, one health and PE, and then 12 elective credits. And that can come in two combinations of either CTE, arts, and second language. Four that are either content focused, um, which is highly recommended. And then six can be any combination, like with any classes that you want to take, as long as you have a total of 28 credits. Now, there was um, some talk of career and college readiness, graduate CCRG. And we're really going to kind of... Um, bypass this information and we're going to bypass it because the state of North Carolina um, has now decided that they are going to forego it for you guys. Um, so you have just dodged a bullet um, which essentially was a legislation that requ required students um, with a GPA of 2.2 to 2.799 to take um, some extra courses or extra modules of education that were either integrated into their English for curriculum or um, an independent math course. So because you do not, it no longer applies because they have now postponed it, we're gonna kind of breeze right on through that. Um, SAT and ACT. Um, Mrs. Beerman, would you like to talk about that please? Yes, I can talk about those a little bit. Um, as you guys know, the SAT and the ACT are the two um, tests that you can take for college entrance purposes. Now, I will say a lot of schools are moving more toward um, a test-free option 
which um, can be good for some students who have high GPAs, are very intelligent, just are not good test takers. And um, those students are certainly out there. But um, the SAT is given usually every time it is given, we give it at Granville Central. The ACT, I usually only give maybe once or twice a year, depending on how many students sign up, how many students I think are going to sign up. Um, but even the times that it is not given at Granville Central, a student should be able to take it um, somewhere close by. Um, so still a lot of schools do require an SAT or ACT score. Um, when you sign up, the vast majority of people sign up online. It will give you, I think it is four spaces or is it six? I don't know. You can chime in, Mr. Fields, if you know, but spaces to put in um, a college that you know you're pretty interested in. So I would encourage students to take advantage of that because if you put those colleges in when you sign up for the SAT or ACT, they will receive the scores automatically and um, and then you don't have to worry about asking me or going back on the website and sending them later. If you send them after the fact from the SAT or ACT website, I believe the fee is $12. So it certainly can be done if you add a college to your list later after taking um, the test and getting the score back. But it does work out nicely if you take advantage of those spaces to get, you know, so that your top colleges receive your scores automatically. Um, if you just, if you're, when it comes time for you to sign up for the SAT or ACT, if you just go into a search engine and type in register for ACT, register for SAT, um, you should be able to find the information you're looking for. Um, again, there will be um, an opportunity for a fee waiver for students who are on free reduced lunch. So if you are in that boat, um, please come and see me and I will be able to give you a code that will allow you to sign up for the SAT or ACT for free. Um, otherwise, when you, if you know, if you do a search, it will tell you how, how much the test is. It does depend slightly on whether or not you want to do the um, essay. And students ask me all the time whether or not they should take the essay. I think it kind of depends on how strong of a writer you are. If you're a strong writer and you want colleges to see that, then I would recommend um, doing the essay, even though obviously if you take the essay, you have to stay a little bit longer in the testing session. Um, but if you're not a strong writer or you really don't think it's gonna be too much of a factor, you can sign up to take the test without the essay. And actually you can even change your mind the day of the test. Um, so just so that everybody, everybody knows that. Um, trying to think what else I should say. Um, so yeah, that the May SAT um, was canceled due to COVID-19. So the next time the SAT will be given um, is going to be June 6th um, or wait. Um, yeah, that's all right. June 6th. Is that right? Okay. And um, yeah, because the SAT did one thing and the ACT did something else and um, it, it yeah. got confusing. <laughs> but um, you'll see on the screen, I was saying, hey, Ginger, you'll see on the screen what the anticipated dates are for SAT um, when they plan to do more testing. Um, but of course, they have to update that information but this is the most updated information on their website at this time right um and then here's the a here are the act info and dates for um their act exams so again when you look this stuff up it's going to give you the test date a regular deadline and then a late deadline and you can register up until the late deadline but just know that there's a late fee, which can get kind of expensive. Mm -hmm. Yep. AP testing, Mrs. Helner. I'm here. Um, so if you are planning on taking AP t uh, courses next year, we strongly advise that you go ahead and take the AP exam for those courses. Um, the exams are free. Um, but if you sign up for the test and don't take it, the fee has actually um, gone up this year. 
Um, oh. So it's now $40 instead of 15. So definitely, if you sign up, we're definitely going to need you to take that test because then you're going to owe $40, which you don't want. Um, there's really no reason not to take the AP exam because the UNC system schools now accept a three, four or a five for college credit, where in prior years, only a four or five would get you college credit. So we strongly encourage you to take the AP exam. Um, your teachers will get you ready. There's lots of information available through the um, AP College Board site to get you ready. Um, so we really would like it if you um, if you do decide to take AP courses that you go ahead and take the AP exam. Ms. Breaker. Thank you. So let's talk post-secondary options. Um, <clears throat> you want to make sure that you, here are the three options, obviously, military, workforce, college, and university. Um, you want to make sure that you determine which branch and option are best for you. Um, talk with more than one recruiter um, for, you know, different branches. Don't feel like you have to go with one. Um, don't feel pressured to, you know, join the Marines after speaking with a Marine recruiter. If you think you might want to also talk with an Air Force recruiter or also an Army recruiter, you know, you have that right to do that. Um, we have a military fair every year and um, we will, you know, make the announcement about when that is. If um, every senior takes the ASVAB, um, so if you do intend to go to the military, you want to make sure that you're doing your best on the ASVAB. Mrs. Um, Beerman can um, talk with you more about ASVAB and get you situated with that if you have any questions. Um, remember that Mrs. Beerman will be your 12th grade counselor. Um, so you guys will move on from Ms. Breaker to Mrs. Beerman. Um, you can go to college at the same time as being in the military. So don't think that, you know, once you choose military, there's no more college. Um, you do have that option. If you are planning to go straight into the workforce, you want to make sure that you have a plan in place. Um, so signing up for those um, business classes, registration is already expired at this point. Um, so you want to make sure that if you have those, you, you know, take advantage of them. Um, attend one of the resume building, resume, resume writing workshops that we offer throughout the school year. Um, and then knowing that, um, some colleges have different or minimum requirements. Um, Ms. Beerman, did you want to chime in on this part? Um, I guess I can say a few things. Um, obviously if I think, I feel like most of you guys know this, but if you are planning to apply to a UNC system school, um, you will need the fourth level math. Um, and two levels of a language, a foreign language. Um, so just putting that out there, like you can graduate from high school in math, for instance, with just foundations of math, math one, two, and three. But if you want to apply to any of the UNC system schools, any of the public four-year colleges in North Carolina, you're going to have to have that fourth level math and the two levels of the foreign language. Um, but I think, you know, what Ms. Breaker is saying is accurate. These are the three main kind of um, post-secondary options that we look at. But as you can tell from looking kind of at this slide, there's so much variation with what students can do. A lot of students um, graduate from high school and work full time and attend community college part time or go into the military, but are also working on a college degree while they're in the military, or they want to get a four-year degree, but they start out at a community college. Like, um, I think every individual student just has to take into consideration what their goals are, what their financial situation is, um, all those kinds of things where their time needs to be spent, maybe there's family obligations, maybe there's medical concerns, all these things play a part into, play a part when a student is deciding what they're going to do post-secondary. And when we talk about foreign language, you wanna make sure that if you have opted to take sign language as your foreign language, you wanna make sure that, um, Sign language is considered a foreign language because not every school or university considers sign language a foreign language. So that goes back to researching your schools and making sure that you um, know all the information as far as their admission requirements. Financial aid, do I have to apply? Yes. <laughs> um, short answer is yes. Everyone who is planning to go to college 
must apply for financial, um, must do the FAFSA form. Um, even if you think you won't get any money, even if you're only offered loans and don't plan to accept them, even if you get offered a scholarship, in fact, in order to even get a scholarship, um, you have to, um, you must complete the FAFSA. Um, so that's, it's not, it's not really optional. Um, and that includes um, athletic scholarships, folks. Yes. So everyone, I don't care what your situation is, you need to complete the FAFSA. It opens October 1. My advice is do it as quickly as possible after it opens your senior year. Um, and if you have questions, if you're not really sure what to do, you know, please reach out to Mrs. Beerman and ask your questions. Don't um, try to ignore it. It won't go away. If you ignore it, it, it will still be there. And um, what we don't want you to do is find yourself without money um, or unable to even attend college because you did not do or receive a scholarship or a grant, what have you, because you did not do the form. Um, loans, just kind of talk about the different variation of financial aid. Loans must be repaid, okay? And there are various types of loans. Um, and there is a resource about loans at the end of the presentation. Also, CFNC has um, information about loans. Um, grants are typically need-based, although some can be merit-based. Um, and those do not have to be repaid. And scholarships um, can also be need or merit-based. Um, so it just really depends, but the, the, the lesson of it all is grants and scholarships do not have to be repaid. Loans do, um, parent information is required. Um, there are some exceptions, for example, independent students, students with children, um, unaccompanied youth or, um, students who have been in the foster care or are in the foster care system, um, that parent information is not required. I know that sometimes parents are very um, reluctant to share their financial information. Um, however, um, please know that your student will not be able to attend. Um, students will not be able to attend um, college or receive um, any type of financial aid, any type of scholarships grants, loans, whatever, they will not be able to receive it without your parental information if they do not meet one of those exceptions. Um, we do have FAFSA nights at the school. Um, and Ms. Beerman, you can chime in on those. And um, Mr. Fields, if you would also um, cover the next slide. All right, uh, for your RDS, this should already be done. Um, if you have not done your RDS, um, as simple as going to CFNC and clicking the middle tab, is it automatically be linked to your CFNC profile. Um, or you can just Google RDS as well and start your account from there. But please know if you do that, you are going to have to link it to your CFNC profile at some point. So it's easier just to sign on for your CFNC profile first. Um, so as far as your FAFSA, your FAFSA, um, the priority deadline was March 1st, but you can complete your FAFSA all the way up until June 30th, which is the hard deadline for uh, to enroll in school in the fall and to receive financial aid. Um, please understand that financial, your financial aid uh, money that you receive or your EFC, your estimated family contribution, is determined off the income that your parents or guardians made in 2019 and 2018. They, you will have to do the FAFSA every year because people's families' uh, income can change. So please understand that and please try to get your FAFSA done by March 1st every year. As, following, uh, as far as DACA, um, please know that if you did not apply for the DACA scholarships this year, they all they reopen just like all scholarships reopen in the fall. Please try to com complete that in September. You want to get that done in September because you are no longer no longer a rising senior or um, that's trying to apply for college. So you need to get your scholarships as fast as you can because some scholarships are on first come first serve basis. So if the rising juniors are doing scholarships now, you wait till after they do them. 
uh, you may not receive those scholarships. So please uh, do that as soon as possible. All right. Thank you. Um, Want to chime in? Yeah, really quick. I just wanted to um, say, so you guys who will be seniors next year, when you complete your FAFSA, hopefully in October, um, you will have to create a username and password. Um, and when you do that, you make sure that you keep that somewhere safe. Um, and I don't know what that's going to mean. I'm, some students put it in their phone, but that makes me kind of nervous because what if your phone gets dropped in the lake, uh, whatever, perhaps um, leaving it somewhere in your parents' home would be a good idea, somewhere they know they're gonna be able to access it later on because you have to reapply for financial aid every year you're in college. So if you're getting a bachelor's degree, you will apply for financial aid four different times. Um, and it's I've heard that it's really, really a bad situation if you do not keep that login information um, and then you try to complete the FAFSA the next year, you have to have that information. That information is tied to your social. It's like your signature, it means you. So just make sure when you go to, when you sit down with your parents to fill out the FAFSA, and I recommend sitting down with your parents because it's going to ask for your parents' social security numbers. It's going to ask for things that you probably aren't going to know off the top of your head. Um, so when that process is happening, when you're don't just you know create something off the cuff and write it on a scrap of paper, which might get thrown away, it's very important that you have that for years, um, subsequent years when you need to reapply. And speaking of that application, it's gonna ask for an email address. Do not, and I repeat, do not use your Granville County Schools email address. Once you begin college applications, financial aid applications, scholarship applications, you wanna use a personal email address, not your Granville County Schools email address because once you graduate, your email becomes null and void. The technology department will eventually delete your email account. Um, so you want to make sure that all your pertinent information relative to applications and such go to a personal email address that you will check, not your Granville County Schools email. Yeah, that's a good point. So when it comes to FAFSA, um, we will um, again have two FAFSA workshops where we will have people from the Vance Granville financial aid office, come to Granville Central. Um, you can bring your student laptops, sit down with your parents, and they will sit there with you and help you through it step by step. Um, there is a little cheat tool that um, most people seem to be able to get it to work where you can hit this button and it pulls in your, in your parents' information from the IRS <laughs> website. Mm -hmm. Data retrieval tool, exactly. And um, if you can get that to work, um, I've seen people knock out a FAFSA in 15, 20, 25 minutes. I think a lot of students put it off and put it off because they feel like it's this big bear, you know, on their shoulder. And it really, you know, as long as you come with all the information you need and all that kind of stuff, I have seen people knock it out in just, you know, maybe 15 or 20 minutes. And when we have those workshops, um, we usually have them in the media center. Like I said, someone from the Vance Granville financial aid office who does FAFSA, you know, all the time and as an expert can sit down with your parents and help you through it and um, work through any places where you might get stuck or answer any questions you have. So um, we will let you guys know when those are going to be. And I would strongly advise that you take advantage. Yes. All right. Scholarships. Um, Mrs. Behrman creates a scholarship bulletin and she can talk more about that. Um, there are some big scholarship dates for the fall, and it's four of them. They're listed there. Um, scholarship websites are listed here. Um, Mrs. Bierman, you want to talk about your the scholarship bulletin? Yeah, I can talk a little bit about that. So um, throughout the school year, um, we information comes into the school about scholarships. Some are more local. Um, and someone comes in and hands me an envelope and um, it's, you know, only for students in Granville County. 
Um, sometimes the scholarships are, um, you know, more national. Any scholarship um, information that I receive goes into that scholarship bulletin, which I update several times a year. Um, and that is always available on the school website and also on Senior Haiku. Um, I also have like a document that has a list of commonly used scholarship websites that um, I always have on my the table outside my office. And um, I send it to students via email and parents. Um, so there's a lot of things out there. And I would just um, encourage students to, you know, be very intentional, go out looking for scholarships because um, it can do you a lot of good in the long run. All right. Um, before I, there's one at the bottom, the College Board Opportunity Scholarship. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you guys have started that application process. Um, it opened up in December for you guys. Um, and it has a six step process. So step one is December through, I want to say June, where you basically are writing down a list of schools that you want to go to. And by creating this um, College Board Opportunity Scholarship account and all of that use application, you essentially set yourself up to um, be eligible to win a $500 scholarship. So you want to go to CB as in College Board dot org, O R G backslash opportunity. Um, so you want to go to cb.org backslash opportunity. Um, this information is also listed on your junior haiku page. So please make sure if you um, have not started that process, you look into doing that as well. Um, college fit and match. Um, this is very important um, for those of you who are intending to go to college. Fit and match, there is a difference. Um, fit is qualitative or more about the quality of something. And what exactly does a school offer that you want? Um, fit is about preferences when looking at or researching schools. So you want to ask yourself, what does a school have that fits with what you desire in a college or university? And does, like, does it have extracurricular activities? Um, student unions, internships or externships, um, study abroad. Are the class sizes big or small? Um, is it in a city or a rural area? How does the student body look in terms of diversity? Are you looking for a diverse school? Match, excuse me, match is quantitative. So it's about the numbers. Um, what does a school want to see in a student? Does your GPA fall within the, a certain range? Um, and of course that may differ from school to school just because a school accepts a lower GPA does not mean it has less rigorous um, or lower standards. Um, some schools are about giving students a chance. Um, not every student is a hard worker and not every student works less harder or studies less than others. Um, the right environment has the ability to bring out the best in people. So um, there is a resource um, at the end of this presentation that talks about fit and match um, when you are researching the schools and colleges that you want to go to. But you want to make sure that um, schools both fit and match to what you are looking for. Um, getting into college, things that matter. Mr. Fields? Uh, as far as getting into college, the, uh, there's pretty much a five-step uh, criteria that most colleges uh, use to determine if you're a best fit for their school. Um, so the first thing is your a ACT or SAT scores. Um, for pretty much any college, you can use one or the other. You can use both if you want to. Um, they make a judgment on which score is better, so you really only need to use one. Uh, as far as GPA, um, your GPA needs to be a standard 2.5 to get accepted in the most public universities. Um, if you have received any um, extreme circumstances throughout your um, time as a young adult through high school, they may overlook certain GPAs, but you have to have a, a complete written statement about this and describing it with the institution. Um, as far as your transcript and course load, uh, it's really if you are challenging yourself and if you are attempting to push yourself. So it's not always about having straight A's. It's about if if you have straight A's in court classes, where did you take any honors classes? If you have straight A's in honors classes, where did you take any AP classes? 
and things like that. College just want to see that you're going to push yourself because that means you will push yourself in the future. Uh, as far as extra, extracurricular activities, um, you do not have to be the student that's involved in everything. You need to be passionate about what you are involved in. So when it comes to extracurricular activities, it's not about how many you do, but your performance and dedication to the particular ones that you are involved in. As far as letters of recommendations, you're going to want at least one from a teacher um, one, or one from a community member. Most colleges only ask for two recommendations. Some may ask for three. Um, please try to get a recommendation letter from those that know you longer than six months, preferably people that know you longer than a year um, or at least a year. And that is most teachers um, that you've had throughout your high school. Um, as far as personal statement and application essays, um, this is probably the most important thing that they judge because most colleges do not have an actual um, interview process. So this is their interview. Um, so when you're writing your personal statements or your essays, this is your chance to tell colleges and universities who you are. This should be the easiest essay for you and also the toughest at the same time because all you have to do is write about yourself and write about something that you went through. There's no right or wrong answer. The only thing you can do is tell your story the best way possible. So that is pretty much the rundown of what colleges are looking for. And if I could chime in for a second about the letters of recommendation, a lot of, maybe not all that many colleges, but a lot of scholarship programs in particular are going to ask for a letter of recommendation specifically from the student school counselor. So that's just where it is in you guys' best interest for, you know, for you to be in close communication with me throughout the year, because the more I know you, the more I, more details I have about what extracurricular activities you're involved in, or even if it's not a school related activity, even if it's, you know, you're big into gymnastics or something that, you know, does not take place on Granville Central Campus, any of those interests, anything that I know about you, I can write, you know, express in the letter so much better if I have had several conversations with you throughout the year. I have a hard time writing those letters if it's a student that I've only had two or three conversations with throughout the entire year. So um, you should always <laughs> have a close relationship with your school counselor, but especially your senior year. Yes, because essentially it is hard to write you guys a recommendation letter um, when we don't know you. Um, and it, your your letter won't be as um, meaty or have as much passion or information um, if we don't know you. Um, and then there's also a brag sheet where we we will require you if you want if you want a recommendation letter completed, you will have to complete this brag sheet first. Um, and it's important that you don't wait until the last minute. If you know a scholarship or an application is due on January 20th, you don't wait until January 19th to ask your school counselor for that recommendation letter because chances are we won't be able to give it to you. Um, personal statements and application essays. Um, there will be a college essay. We had it during the school year, but there's a college essay and scholarship essay writing workshop that's offered throughout the school year. So make sure you attend those sessions. As Mr. Phil said, um, this is your interview. And so we want to make sure that you are able to communicate effectively in writing to those places for which you are applying, um, be it scholarship or college or job for that matter. Um, you just never know. College Board, CFNC, and Common App. Mr. Fields. Or Ms. Beerman, either one of them. Okay, so for College Board, um, College Board is the organization that um, does the AC, the SAT and also um, um, AP courses. Um, so as far as signing up for the SAT or ACT, um, if you just go into any search engine and type in register for ACT or register for SAT, um, it'll bring you to the right place. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously those are tests that, um, the vast majority of colleges and universities are going to require community colleges do not. But, um, anyway, um, for CFNC, CFNC is just a great resource. Um, mm -hmm. you can go on there and 
get all kinds of information about financial aid, about how the financial aid process works, about the differences between you know different kinds of loans, what to look for in a financial aid package from a school, um, how to make the right choice, how to make career related decisions, all that stuff is on there. CFNC is fabulous. Um, so if you do not have a CFNC account at this point, I would strongly encourage you to do that. Um, practice applications. I mean, so much stuff on CFNC. So if you have not um, gone on there just to, you know, go through the information and um, find, you know, things that would be helpful and pertinent to you, I would encourage you to do that. Um, Common App, a lot of schools also use Common App. And I feel like a lot of our students do use Common App. And it makes it kind of nice because if you're applying to several schools, all of which use Common App, I go in there and fill out your information, upload your transcript. Um, I can submit a letter of recommendation through there. Um, and I just put the stuff up there once and then all of the colleges automatically receive it. So um, not every school um, is on Common App, but if, you know, particularly if all the schools you're planning on applying to are on Common App, I would encourage you to do it that way. Yes, also one more thing for CFNC, uh, it also has a section that is just for scholarships and grants. So if you're having um, a hard time finding scholarships that may pertain to you, from the list that Ms. Beerman gives you, you can always go to C CFNC and find it, uh, a list of at least 50 to 100 scholarships um, that may be available to you. Um, and so two other things. Um, there's also, if you want to, if you know that you want to apply to an HBCU, um, there's also a HBCU common application um, and that is common black college app that com sorry i didn't put it on there um and that just like common app it allows you to apply to more than one school at one time um the great thing about that particular website also is that it's only one application fee um so as opposed to paying for you know paying you want to apply to five schools you got to pay five application fees there's only one application fee i believe it's 35 dollars, and you can apply to about 50 you can it's um apply now and pay online twenty dollars so it's one application fee for 55 schools um so that's another resource if you know that you want to attend an hbcu that has the program of study that you are interested in um the other thing was um oh, i can't even remember oh well if i remember i'll go back to it but um uh, definitely want to talk about the common applications and then um yeah, I can't remember what the other thing was. Ms. Breaker is old, you guys. College application, month, college application month and college application week. Mr. Fields? All right, college application month is just uh, a month to set aside that you need to dedicate to completing college applications because obviously you should not wait to the last minute. So it's better to get these applications done early. So for the first week, we focus on the FAFSA and RDS because the FAFSA does open up October 1st, um, but it does not need to be completed to March 1st. Obviously, if you get it out the way sooner rather than later, you don't have to worry about it later, so it's better to get it done. Um, week two is preparing to apply, so make sure you, you're getting uh, recommendation letters for uh, your applications that you make sure that your RDS is RDS is done and does not need to be uh, filled out again. Um, you are making sure that you are completely ready and have all your parents' um, information that you may need to apply to actual colleges. Um, also, during um, week two is usually when there is a priority deadline or early action deadline um, for some colleges and some scholarships. So that's why you keep your eyes open for that. As far as college application week, this is usually when um, North Carolina has its list of 50 plus colleges that are, uh, have no application fee. Um, you need to take advantage of this because usually once this week is done, application fees can range from $35 to $85. Um, so we all know that everybody loves free, so let's take advantage of free while free lasts. Um, as, far, as far as week four, the follow-up, Week four is just a chance for you to follow up on 
all your uh, that you, your applications, you need to send your transcripts as you need to finish your fast and you make sure RDS is done. Um, this is a good chance for you just to recap and make sure you apply to every school that you want it to. Right now, for example, you have UNC Chapel Hills Early Action, um, North Carolina Central and NC State. It's October 15th. That's usually during that week, too, that I was talking about. Um, also, like more hit Kane scholarships as well as our big name brand scholarships tend to be due um, October 15th. So you need to make sure you're on top of that. Um, college application week for 2020 will be from October 19th to October 23rd. Um, you just might as well put that in your calendars now and get prepared for it. Um, do not stress yourself out about that. Applying to colleges is really easy and simple. Just answer some questions about yourself and you should already know the answer because it's about you. Um, so it's really simple. Do not overthink the FAFSA. The FAFSA does not take that long to complete. Do not overthink applying to college. It's really simple. It's really straightforward. And you have ample amount of people here to help you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Fields. Um, so now let's segue to getting a job after graduation, as in high school graduation, or before with the right plan. Um, we talked a lot about college entrance and you know getting to college, but we also want to cater to those who you know plan to go into the workforce. Um, so when we talk about um, Mrs. Rodabaugh, our district's career development coordinator, she hosts a number of field trips throughout the school year, and um, she will, you know, mention those throughout the school year. Mrs. Beerman may send out emails. You may find that um, we'll come into the classrooms to invite you guys to attend those. Um, we've had some this school year already. Um, so just make sure you're on the lookout for those. Like I said before, there is a resume writing workshop um, in the fall and spring to assist you. Um, so make sure you sign up for those. Utilize the career interest inventory feature on CFNC. Or make an appointment with um, your school counselor. So make an appointment with Mrs. Beerman to get one completed. Um, of course, you can join the school counseling department for one of our career cafes. And that's where we have professionals from varied careers stop by um, for lunchtime, for a lunchtime info session. I um, mean, if there are any parents who would be interested in volunteering for that, you know, please let us know. Um, to do this between now and graduation. So this is your to-do list. Um, take a look at it. Um, Mr. Fields is still available. Um, this is his last year with us. So, you know, like he said, take advantage of free while free is here. Take advantage of him while he is here. Um, meet with Ms. Beerman, um, myself, um, research, begin researching programs, do all the things that are on this list, um, making sure that at all times, you are completing scholarship applications if you want to go to college. Um, so, you know, take a good look at this list. Um, so although this recording is available by video, it will also be available in PDF format. So you can always go back and look at it. Um, these are some free resources for you. So there's a fit and match worksheet. Um, and if you go to this website, it will take you, um, I'm gonna, I wanna click on it. Um, It'll take you to it. Um, and here's what it looks like. So essentially, it's a tool to help you research and find the colleges that are a good fit and match for you. Um, and it's, you know, it's brought to you by the ACT um, Center for Equity and Learning. But they get you, you know, all the stuff that you need. And then here's the actual worksheet. So it's a fillable PDF so you can like go ahead and click in what's important to you and all of that. I won't um, you know stay on that too long. Swift student. So once you apply for financial aid, this is a free financial aid source. You should definitely follow them. Tell them Ms. Breaker sent you. No. Um, Swift student is a free financial aid source where if you are not happy with the financial aid package that you have are offered. Um, and this can occur during any moment in your, whether you're in college, whether you're applying um, about to, you know, graduate from high school. If you're not satisfied with that financial aid package, you can appeal it. Um, and Swift Student um, walks you through that appeal process. Um, they have templates already designed for a letter, so you don't have to come up with a letter. Um, it's a really great resource. Um, so that's their contact information. North Carolina Assist Loan. 
Um, those are education loans for students and parents. Um, you know, feel free. I've put all the social media um, and website um, contact information on here. The North Carolina 529 plan, that's a college savings program. Um, and then, of course, CFNC and summer milk counseling. So right now it's currently Mr. Fields and myself where we um, do summer milk counseling over the summer for um, grad seniors who graduate from Granville County Schools. So it's open to all Granville County School students. And essentially what we do is we make sure that you get to and through college, um, helping you with resources from making sure that you, you know, turned in your housing deposit, um, you know, turned in your, um, what is that fee called, Fields, I think, after turning like June 30th, what is it? What is your enrollment deposit? There you go. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, my guy. The enrollment deposit. Um, so making sure that you have the, you still have a counselor available to you to help you get to and through college. Um, that's what Summer Melt is designed to do. Um, so like I said, I'll make sure that this presentation is available via PDF format. You can go back and revisit. Um, but if um, outside of that, if you have any questions, please reach out to Mr. Fields, Ms. Beerman, or myself. We'd be more than happy to help you. If you have questions about AP testing, reach out to Mrs. Helner. Um, and that is all that I have um, that we have as far as our presentation is concerned. Um, we thank you for joining us. And if you have any questions, like I said, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Thank you.